Hi guys, welcome to Top Table Gaming. You're here with Top Table Ben, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I paint my King of the Dead. So, as some of you guys will know, I recently started painting up my Return of the King Legendary Legion. When I found out that the King and the Heralds were coming out, I was really, really excited to add these to the ranks, and I thought I would share my painting experience of these guys with you guys at home. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you're clicking that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss on any new videos. So before I begin painting, I obviously need to assemble these models. If you haven't already had a look at them, make sure you go back and check out Top Table Steve's unboxing video uh, which shows these models in a lot more detail. I was super, super, super impressed with the sculpts. Um, one thing that really kind of drew me to them was the holes in the, uh, in the King of the Dead so you could see through the rib cage. Uh, it just kind of gave it that really ghostly ethereal feel. By following the instructions, I had these guys assembled in less than 20 minutes. Now, once the models were built, I undercoated them in grey sear primer, which gave me a lovely flat grey finish. As I did in my previous videos, I'm going to be using Griff Charger Grey Contrast Paint to coat these guys. It gives me a nice grey ghostly finish to them and really kind of highlights the details uh, on the models. As you'll see to paint on the contrast paint I am using a medium shade brush and the reason for this is uh, a large brush will hold slightly more paint. It means that you've got a little bit more kind of control over the paint and the bigger volume of the brush means that if you do uh, um, over the excessively add paint to a certain section you can use the brush to wick it up and to move it around the model. Another tip I mentioned on my previous video was applying the contrast paint in thinner coats, unlike the one thick coat strap line that contrast paint has. Once the contrast is completely dry, I'm gonna start picking out the armored section on the King of the Dead using lead belcher. Personally, I find Lead Belcher to be one of the better metallic colours by Games Workshop and gives a really smooth coverage to darker coloured metallic areas. My aim at this stage is not to completely block in this chainmail area, but to do almost like an overbrush. What I want to try and aim for is to cover the top raised areas with uh, Lead Belcher and leave uh, a, an almost ghostly glow underneath. As always, make sure you do thin your paints down with a little bit of water. There are two main areas that you'll be wanting to cover at this stage, and the number one is the tunic, and the second one is on the right shoulder. On a model like this with so much detail, it's very easy to go overboard, and I've decided to go for a less is more approach. The next area that I'm going to be highlighting is the hair and the beard, and for this I am going to be using Games Workshop's Celestra Grey. As Celestra Grey is a base paint, you will find that it is quite thick, so again you will need to water this down with a little bit of water. As I did with the last base colour, I don't want to be completely block colouring this area in. I just want to be picking out the highest raised edges of the hair and the beard. I want to be leaving some of that ghostly grey colour underneath. As you're only painting very small areas at this stage, I would suggest using a very small brush, for example the size 1 Artis Opus brush that I'm using here. At this stage it is really worth taking your time and being careful because it is very difficult to go and rectify any mistakes at this stage. 
The next highlight I am applying is all through and grey and this time you want to apply this to the very, very minor edges of the beard and the hair. You only want to be applying this to the areas that would catch the light. Again, take your time with this stage. Uh, it's worth spending a little bit more time on this and only making sure that you're picking out those very, very highlighted raised areas. The next area I'm going to be painting is the reddish coloured robes and for this I'm going to be using Lamian Medium and Doomble Brown. For those of you that have never used Lamian Medium before, it is essentially paint without the pigment. This makes it perfect for watering down paints without losing the consistency of the paint. By thinning down the paints in this way you will still be able to see some of the texture and the highlights from underneath. In this example, I'm mixing about 50% Lamia Medium to 50% Doomball Brown. Now what I want to do with this Lamia Medium and Doomball Brown mix is apply it in a very thin layer over the robed areas. By applying this mix in a very thin layer, you should still be able to see the texture and the highlighting from the contrast paint underneath. Again, you're going to want to apply this very carefully, as any mistakes at this stage can be very difficult to tidy up. Once the first layer has dried, what you can do is go back and apply another coat of Doombull Brown and Lamin Medium mix, but only in the deepest recesses. What this will do is push the darker, shadowed recessed areas and make it seem like there is more depth to the model. The last colour I'm going to be applying to this model is Iron Breaker. Now what I'm going to be doing with this is using a very small amount on the tip of my brush, straight from the pot, wiping it on this tissue and then just applying it to the very highlighted raised edges of the armour. You only want to be applying this to the very edges of the armour where sunlight would be catching them. With the model now painted and ready to be based, I'm going to start by painting the rim of the base and the top of the base with Steel Legion Drab. For this step I'm using a large base brush because it will give me a nice even coverage. Make sure you water down the paint ever so slightly to make it easier to apply. I have personally already done this in the pot as this is the paint that I tend to use to base my miniatures. As the paint has been thinned you may need to go back and do a second coat of this. I'm going to be basing the King in exactly the same way as the rest of my army, so I'm going to be using Luke's APS Fast Drying Basing Glue and Base Ready System. I'm using the Arid Grassland Base Ready material, uh, which to me looks very much like Pelinor Fields. As I showed you in the last video, you simply apply a dab of the Fast Drying Basing Glue to the base of the model and push it around with the tip of an old brush to make sure that you have even coverage all over the top of the base. Once you apply the glue to the top of the base, you can simply dunk the model into the base ready material. Once the glue dries, it dries into like a rubbery texture which holds the material in place and once it's dry it looks really natural. And with that, the King of the Dead is done, ready to take pride of place in amongst the Warriors of the Dead. As you can see here, I applied exactly the same techniques I applied to the King to the Banners of the Heralds. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you're letting us know in the comments below and clicking that like button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that subscribe button and never miss a video.